Cross Stitch Lady. Welcome to my craft room. Um, it's been a little while again since I've been with you. Um, my videos have been spaced out quite a bit, uh, but I've just had a lot going on in my life. And so I'm hoping to make more frequent videos here in the future, especially since summer is coming. Um, I, like I said, my name is Carla. I am, uh, this is a channel about cross stitch and just everything dealing with cross stitch. And I am a public school teacher in central Kentucky. I specifically teach middle school. Uh, and so people always freak out a little bit when they hear that, but um, I can't imagine teaching any other grade level. I really love it. I uh, love it as much as I love my cross stitch. But um, that's what we do here. And so I want to give a big shout out and thank you to my current subscribers who keep coming back to visit me in the craft room each time that I'm here. And I appreciate that so very much. And I also appreciate my students who put me over the 1000 subscriber mark there. They're very much into the subs, you know, um, so it, it's nice. And I'm, I'm glad to have so many people joining the community. It's very exciting. Um, but I don't hang my hat on those numbers, but you know, the kids get into stuff like that, but it was fun to see them want to help Miss Preston out. <laughs> so anyway, um, I have several new subscribers since my kids have gotten me over that mark. And I just want to say a big thank you. And I'm so happy that you have decided to come visit with me in the craft room. And I hope that you enjoy it and get a lot of um, joy out of it. And hopefully I can inspire you to do all kinds of creative things and maybe enable you uh, a little bit. Hopefully you'll see some things here that maybe you would like to have or work on yourself. So I've got my list going here and I've got all kinds of stuff uh, scattered around here. So um, I will try to keep things moving so that, you know, it doesn't go super long. I know a lot of us like the longer videos so we can stitch with them, but we don't want to get too carried away, right? Uh, but I do have a lot of things to show you. Uh, I don't have as many actual whips to show you, although I do have a couple of whips and I have a finish. Uh, and I feel like that's doing pretty well for me because I feel like uh, if you didn't know, um, and I, I promise I will not keep bringing this up, but it's been still been pretty recent. My father passed away a few months ago and I can't believe it's actually already been that long, but um, I've, I've found my, my stitching has changed a little bit. Like my habits have changed. My, my rotation isn't quite what it is. I get fixated on one project and keep going and the ladies in my stitch group uh, just wanted to reassure me, hey, it's okay. It is okay if you fixate on one. You know, that is that is perfectly all right. Whatever's going to help get you through. And I said, okay, you know, that's all I needed to hear is a fellow stitcher remind me about that. So anyway, let's start this out with a shout out. And the shout out uh, is to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Now, Caterpillar Cross Stitch is a floss tube channel that has been around for quite a while, several years. Um, and, you know, she was there when floss tube, would, I think, was just really starting to kick off. She is British and um, she has a lot of tutorials on her channel, as well as uh, she's had several stitch alongs and she just talks about different little things with cross stitch. She's also a designer. Uh, she designs her patterns, she designs needle minders, and um, she's still going. You know, they just released a video as early as like six days ago. Uh, she also has some other people who are involved on her channel and helping her out. And so um, just give her a check out, uh, see if you like her. And, uh, you know, I will have the link to her YouTube channel listed below in the description. Okay, so that's Caterpillar Cross Stitch. Okay, so I wanted to make people aware of uh, some of the free items that are out there on the internet some and some really nice free patterns, especially if you're just starting to stitch or if you're just getting back into stitching and you just want to find something to kind of get your feet wet a little bit, some simpler patterns. Uh, I'm going to show you a few that really, um, they're, they're good for beginners because they involve mainly full cross stitches and not all the specialty stitches, but they're also enough where, you know, even if you're an experienced stitcher, they're really pleasant to stitch. 
And I love stitching. Uh, I've seen a lot of patterns that are now just full crosses. And I actually think a lot of them look, they just have a cleaner look to me. And I happen to like them very much. So I wanna show you some of these, which I do plan on stitching myself a little bit later. Um, this one, actually, this is not a freebie. I will wait and show you with, with some of my haul um, because that one, I forgot that was not a freebie. Uh, now with the freebies, you will actually see some of the patterns, which is okay because they're free. You can pull them off the internet at any time you want. Or if you would like to take a screenshot, if you want to pause the video and take a screenshot as I hold it up, that's fine too. You can do that. Um, this one, Tiny Modernist. You may have heard of Tiny Modernist, uh, a designer, and she puts out a lot of free charts. Um, if you go to her website, um, it's tinymodernist.com, I believe. Um, I will look that up, make sure, and I can link that below. But she has one page on her site that's nothing but free charts. So this one I thought was very sweet. It is called Three Tulips in Pots. And so here it is. And you'll notice that there is back stitching in this one. Now, <coughs> excuse me, throat's getting a little dry. Okay, too early for my throat getting dry, right? So um, there's back stitching to that one. Uh, so if you haven't done back stitching, or if you're not really, if you're not even into back stitching, don't care for it, you don't have to do it. Just don't do the back stitching. But um, it's not hard. Um, I think some people just find it kind of tedious. I don't mind it. I'm just, I'm one of those people. It's just not a big deal to me. But uh, if you haven't tried it, this would be a great one to try it on. And at least give it a try. And then you can decide, eh, not really for me, or yeah, this is not bad at all, okay? So you just have to try it. All right, so there's that one. And then we have this one, also Tiny Modernist, and this is called Home Stitch Home, and I am definitely stitching this one. I am definitely stitching this one at some point. It's got to go in my craft room. So there it is. <clears throat> okay, isn't that cute? I love that. I just, I love the little house and I mean, it's just perfect for craft rooms or even just your craft space. So there's that one. And then I like this one. I believe this one, yeah, this is um, copyright 2020. Um, this is by Thistles. And yep, yeah, it is. Um, so these were just some other free ones that I saw online. It's called Be Well. So this would have been during the pandemic. I thought that was cute. Like I said, I'm holding it up there. So if if you don't want to or can't look it up online, you can pause the video and do a screenshot. Okay, this one is from Hands On Design and it's called Choose Happy Be Well. That's so cute. I like the little flowers on there too. And you know, these are small. They're just, you know, like the three inch by three inch, you know, that kind of thing. This one, um, let's see, Cherry Hill Stitchery. And this is Happy Easter. And I just thought it was just very cute. So let me show you, first of all, here this is. And because this is also free, um, I will show you, let's see, I think it's got the, yeah, it's got the color in black and white. So here's the, here's the color. And then here is the black and white. Okay. All right, now that quarter shop also has a lot of freebies on their site, a bunch of free charts. Now, they do put a lot of free charts on there and they ask you to give a donation to Make-A-Wish. Um, they work um, 
very closely with the Make-A-Wish Foundation in their area. They're in the Austin, Texas area. And so they just ask that you make a donation. Well, I printed out several free charts, so I am going to make a donation to them. I don't have to, but I'm going to make a donation to them just, just because, you know, first of all, it's a good thing to do. And second of all, they are leaving these charts up there. Um, they said that they these charts would stay up there forever. So as long as Fat Quarter Shop has a website, those charts will be there. So this one is from their Cross Stitch University. So they did the same thing that I have done. I have a whole playlist of tutorials where I actually teach you how to cross stitch. So if you're just getting back into it and you would like some tutorials, go to my playlist. I'll put a link to it below in the description where you can um, actually learn. I, I take you from the beginning where all the supplies you need and I take you all the way through one project and we stitch it together and it's in several segments. Well, <coughs> excuse me, they did this with, um, this is called Love and it's got a little house and this is a free chart. This is the um, project that they use to teach people how to cross stitch. So here's what that one looks like. And if you want all this information, it would it's just easier to go to the Fat Quarter Shop website, and I'll put a link to that. And here is their, their chart for that. Okay, so that's under their Cross Stitch University. And then, um, and I couldn't believe this. I love this chart, uh, but it's free. Uh, Fat Quarter Shop. And it's called Happy Haunting. And here's what it looks like. Now, is that not cute? I love that. I love it, love it, love it. And they have this broken up into, it was like a mystery stitch long, so it was a sow. So they came out with this part first. And then they did this was actually release number four. So I'm kind of going backwards, but as far as the pattern itself goes, it's not be. And then this is the bottom part. Oh, I know why it says release four because that means all the parts are out. Duh. <laughs> Wasn't thinking there. Let me show you the other one. Maybe. All right, and this is the last part of the little cat. I love it. But if you want a really good print out of the chart, yeah, just go to the website and you'll be able to print it out. Okay, so that's it for the freebies. Now, let's see. What's on my list? Um, let's see. I've got one. I've got one haul um, other than... Um, other than some, I'm going to do the Fat Quarter Shop one um, in a little bit. But this is Tiny Moderns. Now, I bought this one, so I cannot show you the pattern. But this is called Fall Animal Portraits. So you can do them all together or you can do them separately. And they are so cute. So there we have our little critters. I just love it. I love it. And this one, they do have some back stitching with it, so you'll see some back stitching. But they're, um, you know, it's mainly they're full crosses, and yeah, it, there's back stitching in there, and it does look better with the back stitching. But you know what? I'll tell you what, the way you handle back stitching is that you just start one area at a time. I typically save my back stitching for when I um, completely finish a project, although you can do a part of your project or a, like I'm going to do this tree and then I'm going to do the back stitching on the tree and then I'm going to do the house and then the back stitching on the house. So you can do it that way, Might not, especially if you don't like back stitching, uh, it will definitely help with that, definitely help. All right, let me slide this under. Now, 
we have a new LNS. And for those of you just starting to stitch LNS is local needle workshop. And it's awesome. It's called Rogue Stitching of Louisville. It is in Louisville, so it's about an hour away from me. And uh, we went there, the grand opening weekend was last weekend, Mother's Day weekend. And um, my husband and I were going to go to Louisville to have dinner with some friends anyway. So I said, can we pretty please stop at the shop on our way there? He's like, yeah, sure. And he had his phone, he was ready. He was just sitting there scrolling through the phone. He said, you take your time, do, do whatever you need to do. And I was able to talk with the shop owner. He calls himself Dr. Mike. And uh, he has um, two of his family members who are helping him with it. They are currently in Kansas and they are moving permanently to Louisville. They have a four year contract uh, with the building that they're renting out. So they'll be here hopefully for at least four years. I'm really hoping they'll be able to make a go of it. Um, they, I talked to him and, and told him I had a floss tube. And uh, so he's hopefully, he, he's got this app, I think it's called Smash TV. He's wanting to put some local floss tubers on there. So I may or may not end up getting the cut and being on there. But um, I just thought that was um, kind of neat for us to talk about that. And speaking of local floss tubers, I happened to get to finally meet one of the locals in person. Uh, she is Paula. She is the 502 Stitcher and um, saw her in the shop. So she and I got to say hello to each other. So if you're not familiar with her channel, um, I will put a link to, I think I, she was one of my shout outs before, but I will put a link to her 502 Stitcher floss tube channel in the description so you can go check her out. She hasn't been stitching for very long, maybe I think it's been a little over a year, maybe a little bit longer, but I mean, she just hit the ground running and she has been stitching everything. And uh, she's got a lot of nice projects that she's done. She's got several finishes. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's really interesting to see all of the projects that she has come up with because she does a variety of things. Uh, and so that's just nice to see. So check out her channel. And um, speaking of people in the store, while we were talking about that, um, there was another lady in the store, happened to be listening, and um, Dr. Mike was mentioned something about my subscribers, and she says, I'm one, and she waved. And so I got to thank her for watching, but uh, I forgot to ask her name. I don't know why I didn't think to ask her name. So if you were that person in the store and you're watching this now, would you please comment and let me know, hey, it was me. Um, you don't have to give all your information, of course, but um, I am so very sorry that I forgot to ask your name. Um, I, I, that would have been good to know. <laughs> so, but I, I'm, I was very happy to see her there in the shop and uh, it, it was just really a cool experience and they've got all kinds of different types of floss. Um, they've got um, many charts and they're still building their supply. They're still bringing a bunch of stuff in. So, they're doing that. They also have a section of the shop where they're going to be working with yarn. Um, they, they're they not just going to do cross stitch. It's mainly cross stitch, but they're going to do some other things as well. They want to host some classes. They are um, trying to get people in the local area to do model stitching for them. Hopefully I can do some in the summer for them right now. Um, that would be cool. Uh, but they, they want to showcase people's work. So he's you know, he's got a lot of really good plans moving forward. So I'm just hoping that he'll be able to actually do all of that. And I really wish them the best of luck. And he, he was interested. I asked him if I could interview him and he is very interested in being interviewed. Um, he thought a better time would be the middle of July when they have the second part of their shop filled out a little bit more. They should have some more inventory and so I want to show off the shop for you all. They have a website, Rogue Stitching. Um, I will go ahead and link that uh, below so that you can be checking that out. 
but I am going to interview him so that you can get to know him a little bit better. He's the one running everything and um, just get to see what's in that shop. And if you live in Southern Indiana or really in any part of Kentucky, because hey, make it an overnight trip. If you live in like the far ends, that would be a great little mini vacation, It'd be awesome. Um, or if you live in a Northern part of Tennessee, uh, again, great little mini vacation and check out the shop. So there we go. Now, speaking of, I've got some haul from there because I do like to support my local business. My glasses are bothering me a little bit. I don't know why. I'm just, I'm having issues today. <laughs> Let me grab my haul over here. I had to find a place to put it. Okay, so my haul. Now, one of these you're gonna think, uh, okay. I bought a hoop um, and I, I need to take this, let me take this price tag off. It's Frank Edmonds, I believe, the Frank Edmonds Company. And I love their hoops, okay? Now you're thinking, okay, what's so great about the hoop? Well, I like this hoop because as you can see, it, now I like plastic hoops. I don't like the wooden hoops. I feel like they grab the material, although, I have noticed that the wooden hoops they make now are better quality than they used to be when I first started stitching. So I will put in that caveat. I will also put in the caveat that anything I show you or any opinion that I give you is simply my opinion. It's not to get people worked up and well, you know, it's, it's just to give you my opinion. But you know, as far as cross stitching goes, to each his own. If you like plastic hoops, go for it, use them. If you like wooden hoops better, go for it. If you like to stitch in hand, do that. So these are, again are just my opinions, but I like the hoops and I did like the Q-snaps. I love Q-snaps, I love tension. And I just can't get the tension that I need when I stitch in hand. So that's why I do Q-snap hoop. Well, the Q-snaps, if you aren't able to like put them on a stand or, or something, uh, for me, it gets, they get, people complain, and I've complained about them getting heavy in the hand. Uh, and so I have to have my work pretty close up to me because of my eyes. So I don't know how well a stand is going to work for me. I haven't tried it. I guess I really do need to try a stand. But for right now, I've taken a break from Q-snaps. I'm using hoops. And this one has the, I love the rounded edge. Some of them have very, the sharp you know, square edges. And I'm just, I'm, I'm a tactile person. So I just really like the rounded edges and I wanted some more of these. So this one, oh, this is an eight inch hoop. So that's about as big as I wanna get actually. I like the smaller hoops, but I wanted to buy that. That was the only size they had. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna get my hoop. So I got a hoop. I also got size 26 John James needles. So they have some John James needles. John James is a good brand. Now Bowen's, Bowen's my baby. I love Bowen brand, but John James is also a very good brand of needles. So I got some of those. I got some needle minders. Uh, let's see, let me, where is this one is Kelm Scott Designs. Oh, it's so pretty. And you know, I, I don't like purple at all. Don't like it at all. <laughs> so here is this needle minder. I love it. So pretty. And then I've got a Zappy Dots one. Um, I'm not going to show it. Some of, now I, I do, I do want to warn you about one thing. It's called Rogue Stitching for a reason. So they have some sections where they have some subversive cross stitch. Now, if you're, you are uh, unsure of what subversive cross stitch is, just think about the name. Um, it has some language on it. Um, some people like to stitch it because it's a mental release for them. Um, and some people, it just doesn't bother them. They, do, they think it's funny and they do it. That stuff doesn't bother me. Now, I do not put it on my channel because 
Um, there are people out there who are very bothered by that um, and they would never stitch anything like that. And that is just fine. Obviously that's fine. Um, but I want to respect everyone on my channel. And so uh, I, it's not, I don't sit around stitching that stuff all the time, but I have stitched some of it. I've got, I've got a little bit of stuff. Um, and some I've done for some other people because they wanted it. And it, do, it doesn't phase me. It does not bother me. I'm, I'm around people who are like that all the time. It just doesn't bother me. But like I said, I want to respect my audience. Um, and so I will not show any of that stuff on my channel. So you do not have to worry about that. You will not ever see any of that. Um, so, uh, you know, they. I just want you to be aware that in in the shop now, it's not like out everywhere, but they but they do have some sections of that, like one or two sections. So just be aware of that. And you know, if if that offends you or you just really are uncomfortable with it, then you simply don't don't have to go or you don't need to engage in that. Um, so it, I just wanted to make you aware so that you are able to make an informed choice about what you would like to do. Or if, and they do have a lot of just awesome patterns on the website that that are don't have anything to do with that. They're they're all the patterns that you would normally see anywhere else. Um, so if you're looking for just those types of patterns, like you know just regular patterns, don't let that deter you because you know it's not like out there for you to everybody to see. Um, so they do have they try. I noticed that they are trying to have an inventory that will um, meet the needs of different types of stitchers and different types of styles of patterns and that kind of thing. Um, so, but just wanted to make you aware of that. Now they do have, they dye their own fabric and they do have some awesome fabrics. So their fabric is called Atomic Ranch Fabrics. I bought some 28 Lugana. Um, this is lavender. And let's see, it's it's showing up actually pretty well in this light. It's got the modeling to it. So I thought this will be awesome maybe for Halloween piece. So got that. And then I've got, this is also from them and the color is, this, color, this was lavender by the way. <laughs> this is called Euphoria. This is a 32 count Lugana. And this one, I like that it has kind of a bluish purple modeling in it. Um, and it's more of like a, a greenish background. Okay. All right, so got that. And then I bought, um, this is another 28 count. This is Jobelin. They said that Jobelin is not being made anymore. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I guess right now Jobelin is not really an in fabric. More people, if they're going to stitch on even weave, they tend to stitch on Lugana. I like Jobelin and the difference between the two is just the materials that are used in the fabric. Um, Jobelin to me uh, seems to be maybe just a little bit thicker. Um, I really like it and I normally would not buy this color, but I thought I need some more neutrals and I need some darker neutrals just to have. This one's called Plum Pudding. So you can see, okay, let's see. Okay, you can tell there's the color a little bit better that way. Okay, so, I mean, you could put samplers on this. Um, this is a fat quarter, so, you know, smaller sampler maybe and let's see oh I bought some size 24 John James as well <laughs> so it's 24 and 26 I tend to stitch more now with 26 although 20 I like to have my 24s around in case I need to actually stitch through some quilting fabric they're good for that um I saw these. I thought these were really cool. These they, these are Charles Craft bookmarks, and we don't have these in our Michaels. I may ask if they can bring them in, but this is on a 14 count Ada. But it's, um, let's see, 
10 and 5 eighths inch by 2 inches wide. So I thought those were pretty cool. Okay, and then we've got some patterns. This, now this is where uh, some of these um, are your typical patterns that you see in others. I had not heard of some of these designers. And so that's where um, I think they may excel as uh, bringing in some um, designers that maybe you might not see as much elsewhere. This one is um, called Wine Country. Um, it's by Kesslins. Um, yeah, Kesslins. Okay, so that's that pattern. And actually, it might help if I take it out, huh? And they give you a little charm that goes with it. All right, so here's, there we go, that's better. I just thought that was very interesting with all of the the grapes and I don't know that I'll put it on. I might, that actually would look good on this lavender. I don't know. Um, there's already purple in there, but you know, we'll see. And then here is its little grape. That is, let's see, is it right side up? Yeah. And it goes in the middle right there. So I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, so there's that. And then I did get, um, I've got a couple of Stitching with the Housewives patterns, but I really want to try some Chalkboard Black Ada. I have ordered some and I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, the really dark black, my eyes were going, oh, I don't know who you think you are, but I don't think so. So I'm gonna to have to back up and try maybe Chalkboard Black, which has a little bit of a gray tinge in it where maybe I can see the holes a little bit better. This one is called Tulip Trail. Tulips are my favorite flower. And so this is part of their Let's Go Ride a Bike series. They, they tend to do their patterns in a series, which I think is very smart because people tend to want everything in the series and it's just really cute to have, um, you know, matching things like that. So here's that pattern. And that was really cute. Okay, so there's that. And then <clears throat> they also have, um, I, don't, I don't have very much patriotic stuff. So I saw uh, America the Beautiful. I just really liked the colors. And Priscilla Blaine, who is the mom in Stitching with Housewives, um, Chelsea is her daughter who stitches with her, uh, if you're not familiar with them, which I think most people are. But um, I real she's, I mean, Priscilla's just an artist. She's just really good at what she does. And so uh, I like the lettering that she makes. I like the style. So this is called America the Beautiful. And I love the colors in this. I just love the colors in that. And plus people have learned how to do, you know, these types of finishes, which I, I love these types of finishes. So I really want to practice and get better at that myself. Okay, now I also got, um, this one is, I've never heard of them. This is Frony Ritter Designs. Maybe you've heard of them. This is Celtic Pumpkin from the Fall series. And I just, I really liked the Celtic design that was intertwined in there. Isn't that pretty? I just really like that. It's really cool. And then from the same company, Frony Ritter Designs. I love this one. It's, um, it's called Love Made Visible. And it says on here, cross stitch is love made visible. And I was like, yeah. So I had to get this one. That is really cool. And then I have never stitched on perforated paper ever. So I thought I need to give this a try. So um, you, you got a set of two sheets. These are nine by 11 and they had them in different colors. I think they had green, um, but this one is um, of course 14 stitches per inch. 
So I thought I would try this maybe for a bookmark or something. And so it was 450 for the two sheets. Okay. So I thought that was neat. So that's what I got from the cross stitch shop and they had from Rogue Stitching. And of course they had um, grand opening uh, promos going on. You got 10% off and if you signed up um, early um, for emails and stuff, they gave you an additional 5% off. So I was able to get 15% off my order right off the bat, which is really, really awesome. And so there you go. So there we have my Rogue Stitching haul. So let me see if I can get this out of the way without spilling stuff. Oh, this stay. It doesn't want to stay on the stool very well. Okay, so there's that. All right, now my whips. Let's go to the whips. All right, so this is my blue Rapsy pattern, which is not going to be blue but it's going to be purple because this is the first one I'm doing in my purple sampler wall. This is from Rosewood Manor. So there's what it looks like or what it should look like. Now, I haven't gotten very far. Um, I haven't done a whole lot with this. Um, and I'm trying to find my color because I can't ever keep track of my colors. The fabric is from Mystic Fabrics. Oh yeah, and that's why, because this it doesn't sound like a color name. The color name is called Everything Else. It's a 14 count opal beta. And so this is how far I've gotten on this. So I love the way it looks so far. I love the purple colors that I've chosen for this one. And this one, as you can see, this fabric has some modeling to it. So it's, it's a very pretty fabric, um, a little bit tricky to stitch with because it, it's, it's very, very soft as you, you could probably see from that. But um, it's, I don't know, the holes, uh, the, the threads are a little bit wider and looser so it's easy to get your needle into the wrong hole so I just have to be careful about that. So there's that. Okay and then I have all right where is it? Ugh. Okay then I have Citrus Summer. This is by that quarter shop is so Emma Oh, that's really cool. I, in my rotation, I like to have one of my stitch quarterlies. This is from this is one of my stitch quarterlies, so I like having that in my rotation. And so this is a 14 count curved tile is the pattern Ada from Fabric Flare. And I've been working a lot on this one, and here is where I am. So I've gotten a lot done on the jar. It's a lot of blue a lot of blue and right now i'm trying to get that lemon done so i thought let me get the lemon done before i do anything else and then i will i will be ready to move on to a different piece but right now i'm kind of fixated on this one and so there's that <laughs> so there's that and i do have a finish so i'm doing my barn sweet barn series and so um, every star looks the same, except the colorway is different. They all have white, and then they have a darker color and a lighter color. So I finally got the February star done. So there it is. Okay, February's done. This is on a 25 count white Lugana, stitched over two. And now I'm ready to start March, which will have the green. So I've decided that I'm going to stitch all of the stars first. Once all the stars are stitched, then I will go through and I will finish them. And then I will make them into magnets to put on my barn. 
um, which once I get them done, then I'll show you the barn again a little bit later and how it'll all hopefully come together. All right, so there is that. And let's see. Um, okay, so let me talk a little bit about um, I, my Lincoln piece I showed before. I'm not gonna show anything right now because um, it was going to be gargantuan. I used Threadbare. This is a photo conversion program. Well, it was gonna be huge. And I started seeing some bad reviews about Threadbare. Um, what I printed out was seemed to be okay, but they don't really let you adjust your size very much, which I found rather irritating. So I broke down, I did some research on all the different photo conversion programs out there, and I ended up purchasing PC Stitch, which has been around for years. But, you know, um, I used to use Pattern Maker um, by Hobbywear, um, but they don't really make the CDs for that anymore. So, and they don't have an online presence. Uh, not that I'm aware of anyway. So, um, I went ahead and purchased PC Stitch. I am going to run my Lincoln collage through that and see if I can get it down to a more manageable size rather than like area rug, you know? And um, I've also, I'm also redoing my Buster and Brown Eyes piece. Um, uh, Buster Keaton is my favorite actor. He's a silent film star and I was gonna do a picture of him with Brown Eyes, who is a cow, because he did a movie called Go West, and I love cows. Uh, so Buster and Cows, I'm all there. So I found a picture of him and Bust, of Brown Eyes that I liked better, and so I'm gonna run that through the program. And so next time I do a regular floss tube, I hope to have both of those where I can actually show you some stitching progress on both of them in a in a more manageable size. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm still going, I'm going to do them, okay? Because I know some people said they really liked the Lincoln piece. It's the same. It's the same picture for Lincoln. I didn't change that, but I just need to make it more manageable. Okay. All right. So there's that. Now, because I have gotten over the thousand subscriber mark, I am going to do a giveaway. And this is a bigger giveaway for me. Um, but since spring is in the air, I decided to buy some spring items and do that for my giveaway. So none of this is pulled from my stash. All of this, um, all of this is new. So I am going to give away three patterns. Um, and it, all of this is gonna to be together. It's one, one piece. I'll do, I'll do more giveaways a little bit later, but because this is a big event for me, this is going to be a bigger giveaway. Uh, so all of these are kind of spring related. So this first one is called, called Spring Chickens Pin Keep by Stacy Nash Designs. Stacy Nash actually came to one of our local retreats. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to go to that one. Um, but everybody just raved about it. So that's that one. Um, Sweet Summer by Twin Peak Primitives. Love their work. And then we have Quilty Love. Um, designer is Lori Holt. And of course, Fat Quarter Shop. The it's, it's OMA actually. Um, they're the ones who print the designs. And there's that one which you can, and the, this, these designs are very cool because of course you can substitute any colors that you want for that. So those three patterns along with, they will be coming in a project bag. This is, I believe it's a nine by 11. This has the tulips across the top. This is one of those mesh bags where you can stitch a pattern on here if you would like you can stitch your name uh, whatever you would like you can you can or you can just leave it the way it is it has a gusseted bottom where you can actually push it out to and it's it's very deep so it's easy to get um, all of your patterns needle everything that you need into and out of the bag so these three patterns 
are going to go in this bag. And since it deals with spring, if you would like to be entered into the giveaway, um, leave me a comment and just um, tell me something that you um, have really enjoyed about spring and the spring weather. Um, so you don't even have to say the word spring as long as you're talking about enjoying the weather and, and you can include spring, but it has to deal with something about what you enjoy about this time of year. You need to be at least 18 years old because I'm going to have to request information from you. Um, you need to be, please be a subscriber. I would appreciate that. So be a subscriber, be at least 18. Um, do not mention the word giveaway in the comments. I will not announce the winner in the comments. I will announce the winner in my next floss tube, whether that is a tutorial or if it's a regular floss tube, the next one I put out, I will announce the winner. Um, and then I will get contact information from you, hopefully after that point. Um, so I will not, um, I will not put anything like that down. I won't put the name of the winner down in the comments or anything like that. I will just um, keep it on the video. Um, so yeah, I think that's, think that's all I need for that. So if you would like this, then that's what I need you to do is put a comment in there, something about what you enjoy the most about this time of year. Okay. Now, um, we have a local lady who, um, she and her husband, I think mainly her husband, I'm not sure cause I haven't really talked to her a lot about this but she's part of our stitch group and they um, do a lot of woodworking. They have a woodworking shop. Um, it's r, r Woodworks. And they have made needle minders, which I think is just really cool. So I'm gonna show you one needle minder I've got is this, well, this one, which is the shape of Kentucky. And then this one, is a barrel, okay, if it doesn't slide around. And they, they are made uh, from the, the wood and it's just really cool. I love I love them, they have some pretty good, they, they keep wanting to, you know, really stick together. So they're pretty strong needle minders. They do have a Facebook page and they do have a website. So I will put both the Facebook page and the website linked to the description below. So if you would like to check them out because they don't just do needle minders, they also do floss winders and, and stuff like that. So in, if, you're, if you're wanting some notions, then I would definitely check them out. Uh, so I will put that information in the description below. Okay, it's always really cool when we have local people who do stuff like this. So I like to promote them. Okay, now for my Fat Quarter Shop haul, because you know I love that shop. I probably need to buy stock in it. Um, I decided to um, subscribe to, I usually don't, I don't do their, a lot of their clubs because I'm already in Stitch Quarterly and um, I only have so much time in the day and so much money. But I thought, well, I'm gonna do, they have this mini Simply Signs series and there were gonna be four. And I thought, okay, they're just doing four. It's not continuous, this will be doable. So uh, the first one I got was called Love. So there it is. And then the next one I got is called Home. I like that one. And there are two more. I've got another one that's getting ready to come and it's there's supposed to be another one the next month. And what I did, the, there's um, they put it on, you can see the board, this white paddle board. And so what I decided to do, instead of buying four paddle boards, I bought this one, so my wooden paddle board. So I bought this and I'm going to, when I stitch these, I will turn these into magnets and I will put them, I will rotate them on this board whenever I feel like it. So that's what I decided to do. All right, so that's my haul from Fat Quarter Shop other than 
and this is this is my last thing. Let's see where am I? I'm at 49 minutes, so not too bad for the stuff I needed to do. But I got my latest stitch quarterly in squee moment. I have a squee moment. Um, it's got bunnies on it. I'd say I guess I guess I was Snow White in another life because I like my cows and I like bunnies and I also like ducks. I like my geese. <laughs> <laughs> so I like it all. Um, but I wanted to show you all of my stitch quarterly stuff because they're just so cute. They're adorable. So let's see. Let me pull it out. Here's the bag. It's got some flowers on it. This is also one of their mesh bags. Now this is bigger than they normally give you. This is, I forgot what size it is, but it's huge. Um, yeah, oh, they've got the, hold on. Let me get this out so I can actually tell you everything that's in it. Um, okay, what size is this? This is a 11 by 16 inch. This thing's big, okay? Normally it's more like a nine by 13. All right, so we've got that. Now, they also, the reason they do that was they also included a Mad for Plaid mini project bag. And this one is a six and a half by nine, so it's little, okay? So Mad for Plaid Mini, so there's that one, which I think is cute. And then we have, I wanna show you the actual pattern. This is, oh my goodness, <laughs> Bunny's Bakery. Let me take this out so you can see her better. Oh my goodness, I'm just, She's so cute. She's just so cute. Okay, here she is. Look at that. Is that not adorable? I love it. Bunny's Bakery. Okay, so got that. And then the fabric is from Fabric Flare which I love fabric flair. This is the colors called Magical Clouds. It's a 14 count Ada. Um, sure, let's take it out, why not? You'll be able to see it better. So, here it is. Colors are showing up pretty well right now. I like it. So cute. Okay, so there's that. And then the colors, um, they always pretty much either give you, they, sometimes they'll give you classic color works. Usually it's DMC and they, they give you a size 26 John James needle because they like John James. But the colors are just beautiful. Look at those colors. I love the spring colors. They're just so pretty. They always do seasonal things. So I got the spring and then I'll get a summer one and I still won't have stitched all of them. But I thought I would just leave my Stitch quarterlies, each time I finish one, I'll stick another one in my rotation. So I'm just gonna do it that way. And let's see, I showed you the bags and then the needle minder, oh my goodness. Their needle minders, I'm trying to think where they order these needle minders because I mean, they are strong. And I know I've said that like 25,000 times, but here's the bunny. Oh my goodness, she's so cute. I love her. So if any of this is appealing to you and you're like, ooh, I need to get that, it's the Stitch Quarterly Club. I think it's still open. I don't I don't think that they have closed it. Um, so go to Fat Quarter Shop and I will put a link to Fat Quarter Shop below because I'm showing their stuff right now. And um, it will, I will make sure that it links to the Stitch Quarterly sign up page. Uh, and if, if they're not doing sign ups anymore, I'll put a note in the description that they're not. But that doesn't mean they won't open it up again. Or if some people decide to leave the club, they might open it up. So just so you know, just so you know. But I just, you know, I like to put the temptation out there. <laughs> All right, now, last thing is my crazy craft tip, because I always have to do my craft tips, you know. So, 
Um, this craft tip today is about railroading. Now, if you are unsure of what railroading is, it is where you make sure that as you're stitching, when you're stitching with two strands, that your strands are lying side by side, that they are flat, just like railroad tracks. And that's why it's called railroading. And that makes your stitching look very nice, very professional, very even. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> If, and people, uh, this has been a debate, you know, do we railroad, do we not? And people get worked up about it. Well, if you are stitching just for fun, you enjoy stitching and you don't really care and you don't enter your stuff in shows or anything like that, don't worry about it. If you have fun railroading, then do that. If you don't, if it, if it slows you down too much, eh, don't do it. I run my thread over um, a, a, a very damp sponge and it dries very quickly, but it does help to keep um, my threads flat where I don't have to actively railroad all the time in order for my floss to, my strands to be flat. Now, if you have some trouble with them twisting, the technique that people use is they, you, you take your needle and after you have come up and you're getting ready to go back down, stick your needle in between the two strands as you go down into the hole. And as you pull it through, that needle splits them, keeps them separate. And then as you're pulling it through, it should lie flat like that. Okay. Um, I, a lot of times I'll just have to gently untwist mine you know, every few stitches or so. And it seems like it would slow you down a lot, but it doesn't, I'm a slow stitcher anyway, so I don't really notice it. But, you know, it's worth it to me because I feel like my pieces look so much better if I take the time to railroad. I like the look of it. I prefer that my stitches look neat like that. That's me. Um, so you, you know, if you want to test it out, then do like a 10 by 10 square where you're just stitching. You don't even worry about railroading, you just stitch. Then do another 10 by 10 square beside it where you carefully railroad each stitch. <clears throat> Look and see what the difference is. If you don't really see that much of a difference, you're like, I don't know what the big deal is. Don't do it. Um, I do railroad both the top and bottom stitches myself. Some people will not worry about the bottom stitch, <clears throat> but they'll railroad the top. The only issue I have with that, and the reason I railroad both, is that I feel like if I don't railroad the bottom and it gets twisted, then it's going to kind of poof up or mess up the top two strands. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like it won't be completely even because it's sitting on top of threads that might be twisted over each other. So if I'm going to railroad, I'm going to do it all the way. I'm going to railroad both the bottom and the top of the X. So the bottom leg and the top leg both get railroaded. Um, like I said, when I run it over my damp sponge, um, you know, I just put like, I've got, I cut up sponges and I stack them up into like a little salad dressing box. You know, you can buy those in Kroger or anywhere. They're just, they're very small. And I just keep them damp and I re-dampen them each week. And when they start looking like they're getting kind of old or kind of scrungy looking, then I will put fresh sponges in there. But I don't put fresh sponges in every week. It's just, I don't need to. Um, you're just put, you're just putting water in there and I just, you know, run it under the faucet, squeeze it out where it's just damp. And then I keep the cover on, it stays damp all week. And then I do it once each week. And I'll just, you know, once I have um, pulled my floss off of my drop, I run the floss, I'll double it up and then I run it over the sponge and then I will thread the needle. And a lot of times, depending on the color sometimes too, cause the dyes will affect the thread in different ways. But it, yeah, it's flat. And a lot of times I don't even have to try to split the thread. It's just automatically flat. Um, so that's one of the reasons I like to use the, the sponge. So just give it a try, test it out, see what you think. And 
again, you do you. You know, you are the boss of your own cross stitch. Just like Lori Holt says, you are the boss of your own quilt. She also says you are the boss of your own cross stitch and I could not agree more. So with that being said, I hope that you have enjoyed your visit to the craft room today. I hope you've been inspired to be creative. I hope you are wonderfully blessed and I will see you later.